Hello. So today we're going to discuss appendicular skeleton, and my friend Bob is going to help us. So what is appendicular skeleton? Appendages, right? Upper limbs and the actual lower limbs. So the first bone we're going to look at is the humerus. Here's the proximal part of the humerus. Here's the distal part of the humerus. So how do I know if this bone from the left side or from the right side? So there's a few features or the landmarks that you really have to pay attention to. So here's the head. And the head of the humerus always points to the midline, to the midline side. And here's the scapula, the shoulder plate. In the shoulder plate, important landmark is the fossa, or it's called glenoid fossa. And the glenoid fossa has to point to the lateral side. So the head of the humerus articulates with the glenoid fossa right here. If you look at my friend Bob, here's the humerus and here's the glenoid fossa of the scapula. That's the articulation. So the head points to a midline and the glenoid fossa points to the lateral side. So how do you know that the scapula, this particular scapula, is the left or the right? So you have to look at the spine of the scapula. You see the scapula is very strange looking bone. So here's the spine. So the spine points to the back, posterior. So if the spine points to the back, then the glenoid fossa points to the right direction. So then I'm holding a left scapula, right? Right here would be left scapula. And then the humerus will articulate with that. So there are other few important landmarks for a humerus. You see this? It's called medial epicondyle. And the medial epicondyle always points to the midline. Let's look at my friend Bob. You see this medial epicondyle points to the midline. Then you know that the humerus in the right anatomical position. And everything is being judged from anatomical position. Right? So if you know that there's a midline, Bob, can you move? So if you know that this medial epicondyle points to the right direction and the head of the humerus also points to the right direction, then this should be a left humerus. If you know that this is left scapula, now it perfectly, properly articulates one with another. So there are other two important landmarks. One is the posterior and another few are anterior. So this is the anterior side, right? Now I know exactly that this is the left one. So the humerus articulates with the forearm bones. So this is the arm, one, and in the forearm we have radius and the ulna. So which one is which? So the radius is always a lateral bone. So here's my friend Bob from anatomical position. So this is the radius, lateral bone, that's the left limb. And the ulna is the medial bone. So these two bones must articulate within distal part of the humerus. So the first one we're going to take is ulna. So how do you tell the difference between ulna and the radius? So the ulna has this trochlear notch, moon, luna, muna, trochlear notch. So you know that's the ulna and you know that the ulna is a medial bone. And the other one is the radius because radius in the distal part has this styloid process. So the styloid process, like for example, like a styloid, like when you write something with something, right, like a styloid, right? So the styloid at the distal part of the bone and the head or the plate, you see this kind of like a table, that's a proximal part. Now we have to identify if this radius belongs to the left side of the body or to the right side of the body. So in an anatomical position, the styloid process has to be on the lateral side. How do I know? So here's the left hand, and here's the left radius. And the left radius snugs right on top of the carpal bones. 
you see the styloid process kind of wraps around the carpal bones. So this is the carpal bones of the hand. And from an anatomical position, that's a correct position. So now, from an anatomical point of view, that's a correct position. So now I know it's the left. Now the proximal part of the radius will articulate with the distal part of the humerus. So this landmark is called capitulum. So it sits right here. And here, this part is called trachlea. Remember, in the ulna, this is called a trochlear notch. So the trochlear notch will articulate with the trochlea of a humerus, like that. That makes a hinge joint. So this is from the anterior view. From the posterior view, this is the olecranon, right? And articulates with olecranon fossa. This fossa is called coronoid fossa, and on the posterior side, olecranon fossa. In this trochlear notch, these two processes, they have also names. If this process, superior process, articulates with olecranon fossa, then this one is called olecranon process. And this process, the inferior process, articulates with coronoid fossa, so it's called coronoid process. Again, in the posterior side of the humerus, olecranon fossa, coronoid fossa. And in ulna, olecranon process, coronoid process. And you see the coronoid process gets right inside of this fossa right here. And the head of the radius articulates with the capitulum of the humerus. So the arm is one bone, forearm, two bones, three bones. So the entire upper limb has 30 bones. So, and then I'm holding in my hand a hand. Let's shake it, right? This hand has 27 bones. So there are eight carpals. Then after carpals, we have metacarpals, one, well, let's count it from the correct side. From the correct side, you start from the pollux, from the big thumb. So the first bone that articulates with the carpal is called metacarpal. So all of these first bones, right, distal bones to the carpal bones that articulates with carpals, we call them metacarpals. So one, two, three, four, five. So the metacarpals are here. So eight carpals, five metacarpals. And then the rest are the phalanges. So all of these bones that I'm able to bend right now are phalanges. Two in the pollux, one, two, right? One, two, and three per each digit. One, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So we have 12 plus two, 14. Eight carpals, five metacarpals, and 14 phalanges. Makes up 27 bones. So right here, I'm holding 30 bones.